Uh, hi guys, um, my name is Shashi Gaurav. Uh, I started working on Julia last summer as a GSOC student uh, and uh, I made this package called Interact. Um, I'll be showing some of that and uh, today. Um, so I work on this package. I work on uh, UI tools in general uh, for Julia. I think that might Okay, good. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so, so let's begin. So, when people start using uh, Julia for uh, either actually like half a dozen or more really good packages for visualizations in Julia. So I'm going to be going over all of these packages here. So um, it's not a comprehensive coverage by any means of any of these packages. So it's best if you just like take notes and like note down the names of these things and check out, check them out later. Uh, uh, okay, let's start. So the uh, first thing people try out uh, when they want to do exploratory data science in Julia is this thing called Jupyter. Uh, so it used to be called IPython Notebooks. Uh, uh, then they renamed it to Jupyter because uh, it, it also supports Python and R, uh, as in Julia, Python and R. So the, Just close the microphone. Okay. Yeah. So the JU in Jupyter is actually, uh, it stands for Julia. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, Jupyter Notebook. This is how it looks. Yeah, it's uh, nothing too complicated. You can uh, basically write any code here and uh, run it and it will show the output. And then, uh, so there, there are uh, different kinds of values that get converted, uh, converted to uh, different uh, output. Uh, so one, one such example is this thing called color rent. Uh, it's from this colors package. So if you want to see what color this is, if, if you just create the value, it's going to show the color itself. Um, you can actually put these things uh, in an array. So distinguishable colors, actually, uh, if I see the type of this, it'll tell me it's an array of uh, colors. Right? So uh, I, I, Jupyter can show, you, uh, show to you this way. And there is also other things like SIMPI. SIMPI is a package for symbolic manipulation. Uh, so here I'm differentiating uh, sine x squared uh, six times. I can increase it, run it again. I can see the output. So you can also, uh, for your own types in your own packages, you can uh, define your own uh, output methods, right? So there's this uh, a function called write my. You just add a method to it and uh, it just starts working. So I created my, uh, this thing called my type, where I'm showing each character with a different uh, color. So if I create an object of my type, uh, so it's going to call this right my mother and uh, pick a color for each character. Uh, so how do you see data? Right? So I'm using this R data sets package. Uh, it's used uh, basically to like, teach working with tabular data. Uh, so I'm loading a data set from there. Uh, the type of this is actually a data frame. Uh, is, oh. uh, Stefan showed this in the morning. Uh, so it's the same thing, but in IPython it looks like this. I in Jupyter it looks like this. Can you right. make it slightly bigger? Sure, fine. Is that good enough for you? Okay. So uh, the other package uh, for plot, uh, the, the, uh, the de facto package for plotting in Julia is this thing called Gadfly. Uh, so it implements something called a grammar of graphics. Uh, you might be familiar with this if you have used ggplot in R. So it's it's a grammar for constructing um, visualizations from data. So it, over here I'm plotting uh, uh, plotting from this iris data set. Uh, so for uh, different species of the iris plant, I want to like plot. Uh, the sepal and then sepal width and color the dots uh, according to species. I can also color the dots according to say uh, uh, length and it's going to make a continuous scale for me into uh, the plotting. So uh, there are all these uh, features in Gatfly that you can use to make uh, really complex plots. Um, uh, so the uh, other uh, fun package is Interact. Uh, so if you 
So a Jupyter notebook is not complete with a Atmatic Lake macro. Okay. Um, so um, so uh, here you see a simple for loop where n goes from one to hundred, uh, and in the body I'm creating a random uh, matrix. Right. Uh, so to this for loop I've prepared this macro called Atmatic Lake. So what happens is n just becomes a slider. I can increase or decrease it. As you can see, the size of the array is very. So each change to the slider triggers an update to the array. Right? So I can use this. Uh, it, it's not just a slider that you can use it with. Uh, you can use it with, like, a, say, a text box. Uh, um, so I, I'm just using a previous MIME type, uh, a write MIME method. Uh, or you can use it with like a bunch of selection widgets. If you just give it a list, it will become selection widgets. Selection widget. Um, again, I can have interactive plots that work this way. Um, one of the very useful things you can do is explore mathematical functions uh, with this by varying the parameters. So this function is the beta function, uh, and I'm plotting the probability distribution of the beta function. I had no idea what the beta function does before. Uh, Someone showed me this with uh, with interact. So basically, what happens is uh, alpha sets how far left the bump is, um, and beta sets how far uh, how, sharp, how, sharp. how sharp the uh, bump is. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so another thing you can do is vary the parameters of a. Oh, I think I need internet or something. Okay, so uh, that's supposed to render as LaTeX. Sorry about that. Uh, I can also do. Uh, yeah, you need internet access for MathJax. Yeah, so th that's the MathJax library that's not loaded, I suppose. So that's an animation. I'm just waiting the phase of the sine wave uh, according to the time. Uh, it's just like uh, I have a switch, mm -hmm. and the switch works. Uh, switch invokes this FPS function, which generates updates every 30 times a second. Um, that's how it works. So, this is working now, the Haskell part. Is it's okay. Uh, yeah. So in that case, are you regenerating the entire plot, or are you able to manipulate only a section of it? Um, it regenerates the entire plot. Okay. But there is some more cleverness going on. Uh, I'll come to that. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, draw the entire plot, however. Okay. It, it plots, it draws, I mean, it changes only whatever it leads to change. So it uh, kind of uh, generates one section of it. It actually generates the whole plot and then takes a diff from with the previous one and then figures out only the path changed okay. and then updates the part. Okay. Um, oh, well, so uh, that's Catfly. There are other pl uh, plotting packages, PyPlot, which is the uh, binding for Matplotlib, uh, the Python packing, uh, uh, plotting library, and there's Vega, which is uh, which I'm very excited about. Um, uh, it's uh, it wraps around Vega.js. Uh, it's it's another plotting package from the UWASH uh, database group. And there's Winston, which you can use to plot with GTK. And uh, so there's this other package I'm working on. Uh, it's called Azure. Uh, you're looking at it right now. Uh, so this slide shows made in Azure. Um, so it lets you uh, basically build web UIs entirely in Julia. Um, and the way you do it is you take simple parts that Azure provides you and then you stack them up and make more complicated US. So I'm going to show some examples of this. So uh, the most basic thing you can do with Azure, it, this is not even Azure, it's the, it's the most basic data type in Azure. Uh, it's called the LM type. Uh, so what this does is, uh, it just creates a DOM node. Uh, if you're familiar with JavaScript, you know what the DOM is. It's the document object model. It is what your HTML pages become in the browser. Right? So Julia can actually just generate the DOM and then uh, basically draw the DOM on the browser without going through the intermediate phase of generating HTML and then uh, lifting it back into the DOM. So I have this uh, code editor here made in Azure. Um, so I can edit the style of this thing. Uh, so as you can see, I have given a padding of one EM and filled it with color blue. 
and I can change these things and run it and that's that, that exactly reflects the DOM. Uh, uh, similarly, it extends to uh, SVGs. Uh, so, uh, if you are notice here, I'm already starting to create these functions. So, I created an empty circle function which abstracts out the job of creating a function, and then I have a bunch of functions here. Actually, the text is not Oh, uh, the project is kind of too small for this. Okay, uh, so it also allows me to create uh, custom HTML elements of my own uh, uh, choosing, right? Like uh, you can create your own custom HTML elements these days. Uh, okay, ten bytes. Ten bytes. Okay, um, and uh, here's a latex custom HTML element I created, but in, in Azure it's just one download. But if you inspect this, you'll see like a million of these things. But you didn't have to generate all those things. So that's how Azure works. Uh, but there are very high level abstractions. So Azure can convert any Julia value into a UI. For example, here's a simple string that works as you can see. And I can create markdown text. That's what that also works. Let me add some heading and some code maybe. Yeah, as you can see, it's all getting converted into an Azure UI. And even code is an Azure. It's just one. Uh, showing some code is just another element in Azure. In Azure. Uh, so that's that's how this code cell thing is working. So I can create a code. Uh, okay, I, I actually got, so the code slide you're seeing is actually a function that is inside this UI. So I can use the code slide to create a more, one more code slide if I want to. So it comes inside that. Uh, so of course I can use SynPy as well. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, this is Compose, uh, a very powerful uh, declarative vector graphics package. Um, you can actually do very complicated things with this. Uh, I have, yeah. So the uh, other thing I showed you uh, in the introduction is actually generated in Julia. This picture from a single fish, right? So you can do things like this with uh, Compose. Uh, if you just Google functional geometry, you'll find this notebook uh, where, where the, the construction of this uh, artwork by N.C. Escher is uh, explained, right? So this is the Sierpinski's uh, triangle. Uh, so what, so the, it's a recursively defined triangle. So for each triangle, you Divide them into three more sub triangles and uh, draw a n minus one Sierpinski triangle there. So if I, if I start at zero, start at zero, it's just one single triangle. Uh, keep splitting those things, and this is the definition of the n compose, which is actually exactly equivalent. Um, so you can also plot gadfly -like plots, and Azure can draw it. Uh, you have these things for layouts. So I just create a bunch of boxes. They are not given a layout, that's why they're being shown as code over here. But I can stack them vertically, B box stacks them vertically, and then uh, align them to the center or even horizontally. And uh, since I'm using a powerful programming language to create layouts, I can <coughs> do other things as well. Uh, so I just shuffled the order now. Uh, OK, uh, that, that's how you make layouts. Mm -hmm. And you can have higher order layouts where you have tabs and stuff like that. Uh, 
and you can make the pages come from below the tabs. Um, and also, there's a type typography scale that you can use right away. So all these fonts you're seeing are uh, right inside us here. You don't have to look for, uh, I mean, spend hours and hours to get our board looks good. Uh, and finally, interactivity. How do you do interactive stuff in Azure? Um, so we use this thing called uh, reactive programming. Uh, there's a package called reactive.jm which was written to write uh, interact actually. Um, it's a very general package which uh, lets you deal with values that vary over time, right? So, um, so you can have UIs that vary over time. Uh, so, okay. Hello, yeah. Okay. 